Well, hello and welcome to Bali Saturday here in uh, Cardigan. Uh, first time this event's been run for a few years, so uh, it's great to see. It's not a classic car event, but there are classic cars. It's more horses and agriculture. So there's got horse showing area over there. Some very fine horses. I know nothing about horses. And then we've got tractors and cars. So uh, I'm here in Tuk, my little limber car. So uh, very glad that she's here. She's a bit squealy, but we are going on a parade later. So she will be squealing her way around town. Uh, so let's see what we've got here. Big old Ford uh, by the look of it. Oh, it's for sale, 14,000 pounds. What a lovely bonnet mascot. Uh, so yeah, that, that's not a Model A, is it? That's a little bit later than that, I think. There will be a lot of Fords. Here we are, RS2000 with the droop snoot. Really nice looking cars, lovely little RS alloys. And you've got the Recaro seats with the net head restraints. Really, really lovely. Uh, coming round over here, Ford Capri. Uh, again, an RS, I think, because it's got the ducktail spoiler on the back. Look proudly, it's got halogen headlamps. Lovely um, shade of bright yellow. Is that RS3100, is it? Oh, it says Capri GT, so maybe I was wrong. But yeah, big <laughs> duckbill spoiler. Sunbeam Alpine uh, Series 1 to 3 had these really pointy rear fins it's got overdrive as well uh, the hood stashes away under these metal covers so a very lovely car uh, yeah it is a series three there we go and uh, yeah very very pretty cars trying for tests uh, that's a late one they spaced the wipers out uh, on the very very late um, heralds and vitesses so the vitesse is effectively your hot rod um, Herald, so it's same structure, but with a two liter six cylinder engine. And thankfully a much revised rear suspension layout on these very late ones. Uh, this is a Wolseley 1500. It was an evolution of the Morris Minor platform really, but with the B series engine, 1.5 liters, clues in the name. There was also a Riley, which had twin carbs and often came with two tone paint. But the Wolseley gets the light up grill badge. So it wins. Mark one Escort. Uh, very, very nice. A sporty one of those. Mazda MX-5 Mark II. And its great rival, the MGF. Got Morris Oxford Series 2. These are, or could be a Series 3, I think. Uh, these are the ones that became the Hindu Stan Ambassador. Lovely cars. Yeah, look at that interior. Absolutely beautiful. That is very, very nice. A Mark II Escort in not so sporty form although the wheels hint it might be not quite what it looks we never know austin a35 with that little a series engine almost lost in the engine bay very very nice uh, we've got um, uh, austin cambridge here a50 i think uh, a55 and uh yeah yeah there we go a55 is an evolution of the a40 morris minor this one looks very minty and original. We've got the Triumph Acclaim. I think that's the one that was on our Drive It Day run last week. So that's very nice. We've got a Spartan kit car. Uh, I think this is one of many kit cars you can get. I think they often use Marina or Triumph mechanicals. Can I work it out by looking? I think that's a Triumph front end uh, on that. And uh, wipers in mild disarray. A very, very pink Beetle. Uh, a John Cooper, uh, Mini Cooper rather, it's got the John Cooper stripes, that suggests it's an RSP, which was the original Rover Special Projects revival of the Mini Cooper before it became a production model again. Uh, it's about 91, 92 I think on a J plate. Uh, look at this, lovely Ford Capri, um, utterly unmodified, still on the steel wheels and hubcaps. Let's hope it's got a miserable engine. Could it be a 1.3? Who knows? Lovely original number plates, G plate, it's about 1968. That's when those number plates came into use. So uh, that's just lovely. What a lovely car. Austin A40 Farina here. Lovely little cars. And uh, I think this is the Morris um, 8 that was on the run, the Bug Eye 1, with us last week. We were following that car at one point. Armstrong Siddeley. With the mighty sphinx uh, mascot on the front that's a lovely looking car wow it's got the dicky seat at the back here as well 
So if it rains, your children get wet. But you do not look, we've got the tool bag out. Beautiful, look at the original dials. Some nice tractors coming in. Very, very nice. That sounds nice and meaty. I'm liking the noise that one makes. We've got an Escort RS uh, Turbo, I think. Already RS 1600i looks quite similar. We're going to see a lot of rear-wheel drive Escorts. This is prime rear-wheel drive Escort um, country. Going back to the A40 Farina, this is not one of the hatchback ones. The Countryman had a split tailgate, uh, making it one of the first super minis yeah, yeah. in a way, because it was a dinky little hatchback. Quite unusual. Um, we're going to go and just take some time out to look at this line so is that escort rs i think it is the turbo with those wheels i think those uh, are the ones fitted to those yeah it is the turbo very very nice and uh, coming in here we've got a porsche boxster and uh behind that gorgeous gorgeous alfa romeo that is very very pretty what a lovely car Uh, Giulietta, I think. I'm not very good on these alphas. One of the prettiest cars ever made. But Tony, I think. Right, where were we before I got distracted by the queue coming in? Uh, Morris Minor Thousand, that's a later one. C plate, a sort of mid 60s, four door saloon. Um, that by this stage, they changed the wipers. Uh, there's Land Rover Series 1, that's really nice. Look at this. Pop it Sands. Boat Company Limited. That's lovely. So it looks like the Land Rover has been restored, but not that door. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it was actually owned by Poppet Sands Boat Company. The furthest she travelled from Cardigan is when her owner moved to Rid Lewis, and that's not very far away. That is lovely. I'm loving this. That is so nice to think, let's not restore the doors. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, another little mini here, a fairly late one. There's some very Welsh colours, but again, we're going over here for some sounds. It's lovely Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, that is beautiful condition. Sea blue. One owner since new. That's extraordinary. You just hear it humming away. A little 1300. That is very, very nice. A Bedford J-type ambulance. That's extraordinarily good no, I'm really liking that so we'll stand back make way for the ambulance it's got the big six cylinder engine in on that I think oh wow that is absolutely beautiful and uh, then we've got tractors Matthew Ferguson 135s a very, very popular tractor in these parts. We're going to see plenty of those today. And a uh, little grey Fergie coming in behind it. Is that his and hers tractors? I do hope so. That's splendid. Right, let's get back to the lineup. I'm getting monumentally distracted. There is so much here still to see. As we go and return down the lineup. Uh, next to that Mini we're looking at, we've got an MG Midget 1500. Oddly, these were fitted with a Triumph engine from the Triumph Spitfire just to try and give them a bit more urge. Uh, but yeah, you get the uh, controversial bumpers at this stage in life. Uh, this is the Lotus Cortina that was on the run last weekend. A Mark II, another rubber bumper MG Midget. Ford Anglia 105E. That's uh, a very nice looking car. I don't know if it's modified, it's got the mini lights on it, but it just looks very, very nice. Jaguar Mark II. We will see the Daimler derivative of these later on. That's very nice. Series 2 Land Rover was at the Cars and Coffee meet this morning. As was this MGTC from 1949, I think he said it was from. That's a lovely car. Uh, had a quick chat with the owner earlier. Another Mark 1 Escort, 1600 GT, sporty Escorts. You see you got the split bumper for extra performance. Little mini van. And minivans always had a fixed grill, like the very earliest minis. Uh, absolute pain if you need to work on the distributor, which is kind of just behind the horn there. Uh, but uh, yeah, lovely. And here is a Mark 1 Mini. I think, oh no, it's a Mark 2, sorry. Mark 2, we can tell it's a Mark 2 because we've got the larger rear lights. 
and also a larger rear window. So yeah, there we go. Austin Cooper, Mark II. There's still Morris or Austin. Uh, nice MGB. It's about 1969-1970. Uh, it's got right. Uh, sorry, it's got left-hand drive wipers. Oddly, uh, Rover 100 and uh, another Ford Capri of a fairly lowly spec. I love seeing them in this condition. Lovely interior in it. A 1.6L. Magnificent. Uh, another Morris Minor just coming in with his little parping exhaust. And uh, Tuck's been joined by a couple of cars that were at the Cars and Coffee Meet this morning, including this remarkable Ford. You can see his suspension linkage on the back, keep the axle centered. And this is um, the Chevrolet we saw. This was sold in Australia new. And uh, yeah, just absolutely lovely. Oh, BMW Z3 trying to be an AC Cobra. Interesting. Lovely comma wrecker truck here. Look at the condition of this. That is a proper oily rag restoration. It's from 1954. Uh, I love the fact it's got a child seat in it. Oh, if only you could smell this. Because it really does smell like it's been smeared with oil. And looks it too. That is brilliant. And then we got uh, an American Ford uh, pickup over here. Very, very nice. Yeah, and a lovely bonnet mascot. Splendid. And then a duple bodied Bedford OB coach. 1950, wow. Beautiful condition. What a lovely bus. Look, look, at, look at the interior. And it's got wind down windows as well. Right, let's go down the tractor aisle then. We've got Massey Ferguson 565 there. Very nice. A, a David Brown. So David Brown bought Aston Martin and the DB Astons were so named because of David Brown. But uh, he made his money with tractors. Didn't make quite so much money selling Aston Martins. Uh, lovely Ford here. Nice big cab on it. Uh, another great Fergie. A Fordson Super Major. I love some of the names on these old tractors. I sadly know very little about them. But magnificent because the engine, the gearbox and the rear axle are the entire vehicle. There is nothing else. There is no separate chassis. Uh, the, the chassis are made up of the components. Oh, this is lovely. A Super Dexter. Uh, Leyland, British Leyland uh, made tractors as well. And more modern David Brown. I'm not sure what happened to the David Brown company. I should probably try and find out. Uh, another Massey Ferguson 135 and Gray Fergie, F Fergie rather. Fordson Major and Alice Chalmers. That's a fabulous name. There's a power takeoff there, so you can belt drive uh, machinery. Uh, David Brown Selectomatic. Fantastic names. Uh, Massey Harris with a Perkins diesel engine. That must have been fairly unusual back then. There it is, a little six cylinder diesel engine made by Frank Perkins Limited in Peterborough. Pretty sure it's Frank. Uh, another 135, like I say, they're popular here. Another super major. And uh, a little fleet of Fords. A huge John Deere in the background. Yeah, it's just great to see. And these, these will all be parading with us later on today. Uh, McCormick International. Another Alice Chalmers. What's this? Depth o -matic. That's how you make anything sound glorious. You just put matic on the end, and then everyone thinks it's amazing. Another Ford and Major was starting handle there. More Fords. An awful lot of manufacturers made tractors for a time. Um, old motorbikes coming in as well. Another international diesel. Yeah, I think diesel made a big difference. Uh, a lot of these tractors, the older tractors, ran on tractor vaporizing oil. And uh, diesel sort of came in a bit later. I love these um, John Deere's with the split cabs all the pantograph wipers in the world. Uh, another little Massey Ferguson there. Yeah, it's just a lovely display of tractors. There have been some fresh arrivals. 
Well, I've been gallivanting around the field, Bentley 8. There's originally a sort of a lower spec, entry level Bentley. Really nice pantograph wipe at the moment. We've got another MGT type. Uh, I can see rack and pinion steering, which leads me to believe this is a TD. So we saw the TC earlier, but you've got smaller wheels. They would have been uh, solid wheels with hubcaps initially. And uh, I believe Alec Zagonis was responsible for that front end suspension. So it's actually an independent front suspension with rack and pinion. But otherwise, still very, very traditional. Still looks like a pre-war car, but these were built uh, in the um, early 1940s. So yeah, quite the car. And uh, moving over here, we've got the Peugeot 206. Interesting to see. Uh, bay window type two. And uh, we've got a pair of Herald 1360s. These are the last of the line of the Heralds. Uh, this one's on a J plate, so it suggests it was probably a 71. Really, really late in the production run. It was replaced by a Toledo, effectively, from 1970. So we've got the Vitesse-esque um, shaping of the bonnet. Uh, another tractor coming in. Another Leyland. That chugga chugga. Great to see. And uh, oh, we got a 2 CV. Let's go and have a look at that. So, on an H plate, that's a very late Morris Minor. That's about 69.70. And we've got a Westfield Sigma, apparently. It's got 1.6 in it. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, 2 CV. Uh, it's interesting, it's, it's on an R plate, which suggests that there's a year of import. That would be about 75, 76. And uh, interesting, it's got linked wiper arms Ooh, how fancy so uh, th this 2CV has been in the UK quite a long time looking at it it's pre 1961 because we've got what's known as the ripple bonnet on it where the sides come up with that um, so I'm not an expert actually on the um, early ripple 2CVs I'm gonna guess oh it's quite early it's got the canvas boot lid um, so yeah early 50s maybe about a 55 so these boot lids hook into little clips in the body shell here every single 2CV saloon built until the end of production in 1990 has the little clips on the body that these canvas boot lid things attach into so there's an extraordinary fact for you right there and similarly at the front we've got these this is where the roof attaches at the front. These clips are on every 2CV ever made. I've got a really nice, um, I think it's an ERF uh, truck just come in. Look at that, splendid. Uh, MGB GT, a late one on a V plate. Uh, production ended 1980, I think on these. Jaguar XK150 fixed head coupe. Very, very nice. Donald Campbell had one of these. And uh, they like to boast about winning Le Mans in all those years. That's a standard badge. Uh, Reliance Scimitar GTC. I think these were called SE8s in the chassis code. Very nice. Again, fairly late. And uh, MGB on a J plate. That's about a 71. 70, 71. Very, very nice. There's a Mustang here. Uh, we saw this Mustang in the cars and coffee meet. And it sounded absolutely splendid. And this is really, really strange because there's another Triumph Herald 1360. I think all the Heralds we've seen today have been the later 1360 ones. That's a, also a J plate. And uh, looks like a highly original car. Highly original panel gaps, that's for sure. <laughs> and then Simon behind in his little mini. I was also at Cars and Coffee Meet this morning. A somewhat um, patinated Land Rover 90 looking really nice. Triumph TR4, I think that was on the run with us at the weekend. And we've got a pair of Morris Miners, uh, very nice split screen ones. Uh, not very easy to tell which engines they've got, but uh, that one, let's see if we get any clues inside. Look at the interior. Oh, hello, that's got a remote control gear lever. I wasn't expecting that, I was expecting the magic wand. Maybe it's been re-engined. It's got, it's got some mini lights, perhaps it has. But yeah, lovely, lovely cars. They've either got uh, the uh, 918 side valve engine originally or the early 803 
A-series engines, but I suspect that one's been upgraded. Let's see what this one's got. Oh, that one's also got a remote control gear lever. Nice. Those early engines are not much cop, so very sensible to upgrade them. A Lotus Land Sprint, that's got the 126 brake horsepower version of the 1.6 um, twin cam Lotus engine. And it is these cars, the Lotus Land, that inspired the Master MX-5 Mark I over there. Uh, Golf was at the breakfast meeting, so was this Larry Corvette. Well, excitement is building, the tractors are starting to fire up their engines. I think we'll be uh, fairly soon after them. So it's going to be a horse convoy through um, the town of Cardigan, uh, then the tractors, and then we follow on behind. So really looking forward to it. I've got you set up in a rather experimental camera position, but I hope is going to work. Uh, but it should be an awful lot of fun. Oh, here we go. The tractors are on the move. So many of them running now. Let's jump outside with a sound. You're attached to the car, so I can't actually you take you out, but yeah. This is lovely. This is like drivers start your engines. Oh, and you can smell the um, TVO, tractor vaporizing oil. Uh, if you look just to the um, right of that yellow Capri, can you see the blue tractor with the box on the back and a couple of seats jammed into it with seat belts? You know, serious impact protection there. Oh yeah, the, the one next to it has got a full blown trailer. Little group of kids in it, marvellous. Fun for the whole family. So yeah, who said a tractor doesn't make a decent family wagon? So uh, yeah, I think this is going to be an awful lot of fun. If you've not seen a tractor run before, they are um, impressive things. They do one at the Llandidno um, Transport Festival around the Great Orn and it's just wonderful. So many old trucks and tractors. Oh, the big old Massey over there giving us our pantograph wiper moment. Just over there, beyond the David Brown. This is just marvellous, it's pandemonium. Cars are all trying to merge into one little narrow exit. Well folks, it's been slow going so far. It's taken us about an hour to get about a quarter of a mile down the road. But uh, fun fact for you, we're looking at the back of this Series 1. Can you see the hole in the rear cross member there? That's because on the early Land Rovers, you could optionally specify them with a power takeoff. To power your farm machinery so they were a proper little tractor alternative but yeah very very early land rover and the aej the ej is a reference to cardigan so that is a very local number plate well, here we go off on our very slow parade of cardigan I've still got the door open because I need it for ventilation. Just sitting here has been getting us uh, really, really hot. But yeah, the people are um, out on the streets. It is uh, great to see. Oh, this is amazing. Look at this. Oh, well, horse and trap coming the other way. Oh my gosh, this is uh, extraordinary. I hadn't really expected anything like this. <laughs> wow, this is um, quite extraordinary. We really have brought the entire town to a standstill. Uh, there's an emissions problem with the horses, clearly. And it's very difficult to avoid horse muck in a three-wheeler. Wow. This is extraordinary. I don't think Tuck has ever had such an audience. This is astonishing. I know they're not all here just for the cars, but even so, this is truly 
remarkable to see so many people out having a nice time in Cardigan. Sorry, no room for passengers. Well, uh, that's it, we're uh, coming to the end. Well, I should probably close the door now. Uh, that, yeah, that was the parade. That was extraordinary. So many people out on the roads. And uh, I think that's us done. That's been um, a remarkable day. Wow. Uh, didn't expect the streets to be thronged like that. It was just weird getting so much attention, so many smiles. Absolutely lovely. Next year, I'll have to bring a car that's got more seats so the rest of the family can join the fun. Hold on a minute. Here comes the Armstrong Siddeley again. Are they going for a second lap? Kiddies in the dicky, marvellous. Oh, Land Rover's checking out his passenger. Well, that's been extraordinary. Um, Cardigan is completely gridlocked. Uh, all, all this traffic is queuing, trying to get into Cardigan, but the road's been closed for that parade, so it's absolute bedlam. But uh, yeah, amazing, amazing day. And uh, what a show. So I hope that's been interesting for you. It was very interesting for me. Uh, that has been um, Bali Saturday here in Cardigan uh, so yeah thank you very much for watching don't forget you can head to the um, Hubnut store if you would like to buy lovely merchandise uh, such as the tuk top we can't do black and orange anymore we can do any well not any color we've got a full range of colors of various hoodies available at our spring store or you can buy stickers mugs we've got some new external stickers Hubnut stickers on the store uh, and hopefully by the time you see this, our cable ties, Hubnut cable ties, are now available. Uh, so go and check them out at the Hubnut store, hubnut.org. But otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Um, I can't really pitch from here, so uh, I'm just going to drive home. Slowly, it seems.